everybody. This is Jonathan Miller, the Hometown Historian Channel. Uh, I'm doing a vlog here. This is vlog number 10. I believe this is, let me just quick check here. November 10th. Couldn't remember. Time goes by so fast right now. That's what happens when you get old, too. <laughs> you start to forget who you are, where you are, and why you are where you are right now. Which is trouble if you don't know where you are and who you are. But hey, it happens to the best of us. Um, so I wanted to give an update, just sort of talk about the channel a little bit, uh, some of the videos that are upcoming, because there are quite a few. Uh, today, uh, I'm doing this right now, I think around 4 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to be going over to my sister's to download the uh, videos for the Union Canal Historical Marker and also the Secrets Dam video. I have that done. <coughs> I'm going to put in the comments. I met a YouTuber there. He's a really cool guy. He runs the Ready to Run RC YouTube channel. So if you're into RC anything, or even if you just want to see more of the Secret Dam, he actually runs like RC boats out on the lake itself, the reservoir, which is pretty neat. I just did a video where he was running an RC car, trying to run it up the dam. So he does a lot out there because he maintains the property out there, works for Levin Reservoir. Really, really cool guy. He's done some awesome videos on the Bordner cabin, which I want to eventually get to do. Maybe even talk to Joellen Litz because she sort of heads everything up there and has a tremendous amount of knowledge about uh, the gentleman that built the cabin, but also the cabin itself and make sure that this place uh, continues to be preserved and uh, out there for society and for our culture to enjoy because it's a really beautiful place. Beautiful waterfall there and all that. And she's a major proponent of, of taking care of those types of things and Joe Allen does a phenomenal job. I also did a video on another place that I want to do, a video on at some point, uh, called Sweet Arrow Lake. It's out, I believe, north of Pine Grove. Uh, it's a man-made <coughs> excuse me, man -made lake, but uh, it's pretty neat. It has a neat waterfall there, once again, man-made, but really neat place. They actually have a, what's called a braille trail. So it's a trail that is like a boardwalk trail that it allows blind people to be able to go and it has different places where they can use their fingers to read the braille and it's sort of a sensory type trail where it's a touch like feel this bark so it allows them to be able to feel something sense something smell something directly that they can't see really neat idea they actually asked him to do a video on that because he does phenomenal work really has a great videographer style uh, and a really cool guy and it's, it's not often that you as a youtuber meet other youtubers but I'd really like to, at some point, be able to get together with him, and, and he sounded much the same. He actually has another video as well. I'll post both of them, or in our channel, that he hasn't done anything with that as much lately, simply because the Ready to RC, or Ready to Run RC channel is just really taken off for him. So the other one, he does a lot of stuff with drones, so if you like drone footage, that type of stuff is another really cool channel to check out. But uh, I will be posting those in the comments just because it's, I think it's more likely to be read in the comments than it is in the descriptions. Uh, I do have a couple photos I gotta give credit once again because I, I wanted in the secret stand video I wanted to show you what the high bridge railroad trestle originally looked which I didn't realize it was a completely encased railroad trestle. It's like a covered bridge type thing. Uh, the pictures that are out there really aren't that great. They're sort of grainy so it's not phenomenal, but once an overhead view to give you a little bit of an idea of how it went across the old dam, which was about 400 feet above that. But uh, some of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, the videos that are coming out uh, next. I'm getting them out pretty much every single day. I'm having to load them my sister yet because my internet, just something's wrong with my modem, and we're in the process of trying to get that fixed. So I can't load them from my house right now, so I'm just loading them from my sister's. Uh, I've been loading about two a day just simply because I have a lot of smaller videos and I just want to put more content out there because I missed two weeks. Uh, but I'm putting, like I said, I'm putting the Union Canal up today, uh, historical marker, and then the Secret Dam. Tomorrow I'm hoping, possibly going to be getting up the videos for Conrad Richter, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning author that lived in Pine Grove, and there's a historical marker for him in front of the house that he lived at till his death. And uh, then I'm also doing another author who was actually a good friend of my dad's, Richard Wheeler, who wrote a lot of Civil War and war books. Uh, he also was uh, 
a film advisor, military advisor for the film uh, Flags of Our Fathers for Clint Eastwood. Uh, he had served at Iwo Jima. Uh, Richard was a really, really cool guy and a great writer. He's one of my dad's favorite writers. I actually have a couple of his books that I'm going to show in that video that are signed to my dad. And uh, it's pretty neat, neat stuff. So those potentially are going to come out tomorrow. Uh, I have the Tauble Hawk and Path. I still got to get some pictures for that so I can continue beyond uh, the historical marker, which I may have to redo the historical marker one where I just have a picture and then do the audio over because the the sound is pretty in, inaudible and I don't think it's going to be usable uh, film footage and I don't want to have to drive the whole way back up the Pine Grove to uh, do a 30 second, 40 second clip. So I'm probably going to just redo that one have that out maybe like Friday um, and then I want to have a larger video out with that which I believe that's going to be it's called the Seven Elizabeth Cemetery and I'm not going to talk much about it because uh, it's a pretty cool story uh, very unique and I got to go down to that cemetery to do that or the cemetery that I think it is because it's been next to impossible to actually narrow down exactly which cemetery it is via find a grave I think narrowed it down to two but the one that I'm leaning towards is fits a little bit better with the description of the guy that I talked to or my friend talked to because uh, I talked to a friend in Middletown because they said this was in the Middletown Hershey area heading towards Harrisburg uh, one of his friends at the library had actually written a ghost book he had actually talked to somebody who knew about it because not a ton of people know about this story and they said it was more going towards Elizabethtown which was on Route 743 but before I think it was like a Route 319. So you have to find a cemetery of a certain age, and it's got to be a certain size, so you can actually have seven women, women named Elizabeth buried in roughly the same time. And uh, I think I found it, but whether it is or not, I really honestly don't know, because sometimes with these stories, these haunted stories, cemeteries don't really want to own up that they have people buried there like that or whatever because it does draw in unfortunately a crowd that likes to do vandalism and stuff like that and then you get weird stuff around your cemetery and nobody wants that so it's understandable if they sort of you know are standoffish with it. it's sort of like you look at moonshine cemetery all all they went through in the 80s and 90s with people vandalizing and things of that nature so you can understand that you know a church or a community cemetery would not want certain stories to be so I'm not going to actually give the name of the cemetery itself I'm just going to film there because honestly I'm not sure if it is the cemetery because there's at least at one time there was a wall around it because there's a tale with that as well something can happen if you do a certain something so it's a cool story I'm hoping to get that out like maybe Saturday Friday or Saturday and then uh, Saturday I'm hoping I'm going to have another haunted tale about a man called Bordner. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to let it surprise you. Uh, we all like campfire stories, so I think I'm going to try something with this that's a little more spooktacular than uh, some of the other ones that I have. And um, Cliff, actually, when we were out, we were out filming in Gettysburg yesterday. You will have seen the photographs and stuff like that. I have six films coming out. None of them are going to be terribly long. From Sunday through I guess it would be Friday. I'm going to put one Gettysburg film at a, uh, a day. And then potentially if I'm able to get over to uh, Fort Manita, do a couple more Haunted Tales. Uh, I'd like to get the Haunted Tales up before Thanksgiving. But I'd like to have a nice, nice long uh, row of it. But when we were at Gettysburg yesterday, uh, Cliff actually told me a couple other really sort of cool haunted stories. So I'm going to do a little more research, try to come up with maybe seven or eight more of them. I have two as of right now, plus the two that Cliff told me. Uh, so I'm going to try to grab a couple more of these stories and, and do them for you. Do a little storytelling. Uh, one of the things that's going to be upcoming, actually, uh, I had talked about in the Indian Town Gap video yesterday, that I'm going to be going back and filming all these different, like the tanks and stuff. Because it was the one complaint, uh, maybe not just a complaint, criticism, whatever you want to call. I concentrated more on reading the plaques which I'm going to show the plaques. I'm going to have it so it's close enough that you can pause it and you can read it yourself. We'll name off what it is. 
but then we're going to actually go around each vehicle so you can see them in a lot more detail and, and find some enjoyment in that. So it'll be a little bit different of a video we're going to do on Indie Town Gap. And it is going to be the first video I do with my nephew. And we're going to do it on a series called the World at War series. Or military series or something like that. Where <coughs> Luke and I are going to, my nephew Luke and I are going to explore all different types of cool things of military history. Uh, we're going to film at locations. We're also going to go out and uh, do some of these documentaries on some really cool old war stories military stories that nobody's aware of and i just think things stories that shouldn't be forgotten and should be remembered and we should uh talk about them put them on video and uh luke and i are going to do that we're going to try to find our style and figure out how we're going to do it exactly but luke and i have a good rapport same sense of humor so luke's also the one that uh we want to go on from you cut which does a good job and I'm still using it for certain things like doing my audio. I'm also using it uh, when I, like with the Secrets Dam video, I had to cut out the first five minutes and then cut out that middle section. I had to do it in two tight times to uh, get that last three minutes and 15 seconds, whatever it was that was actually usable. So I'm still using U-Cut to do some of those things, but I am using now the same editing software that he uses is called CapCut. A lot of TikTokers apparently use it, and it actually is a little more simple, plus it's it's the whole app, whereas like you cut, you do have to buy a premium package to have access to everything. So probably it would be a little easier to use, and I could figure things out a little bit easier, but with the cap cut, it has everything available, and that's why we no longer have the snot green thing that's on top of the video and below the video. So that is solved now. Uh, we also have transitions in between the film splits, Either it's, I'm using right now like a black fade or a white flash. And I just sort of think the white flash works well, like right after the intro and outro, and it gives it sort of a different look. And then you have in between the video snippets, which in some of these Gettysburg videos that are coming up, there'll be quite a few of those. And I have the black fade, and it just gives it a nice, smoother transition for the film. Uh, so I have that world, world at war, you know, military history series, whatever it is. That'll be coming up at some point. I'm also uh, going to be starting some of those uh, the women's videos. I have two videos as well. I want to try to get done by the end of the week, and hopefully get them released sometime next week. Colleen D and Kate had uh, both sent me a Pennsylvania historical marker series video, or they sent me the pictures, and I'm going to make the video off of that, giving me a tidbit of the history and that type of stuff. And I'm doing a little more researching and adding what I need to. To make the whole video but those are the two first viewers submitted videos they've just sent them to my email um, the hometown historian at gmail.com and then I can download those pictures and then give credit to the, the individual the viewer that has sent those in and like in Colleen's case I will also wind out uh, giving credit uh, to her uh, for her uh, Instagram page as well uh, because I like to get her some more subscribers and, and followers or whatever they call it because all of them have different names for viewers, followers, subscribers, whatever. Uh, but I really appreciate it. It's her, it was her idea of, of doing this. And it, it's something, like I said before, I want to have the channel be pretty inclusive uh, to involve viewers and be able to do stuff like this. And, and, and we'll see where it all goes. But these are two really cool ladies, cool videos, cool historical markers. I'm looking forward to making those up and uh, get those out. It's just been... Everything's been a little crazy right now. I actually am going to be working Thursday and Friday. Sort of came out at the last minute, but I'm happy because I can use the money. So, but uh, anyways, with being able to, uh, I'll be on unemployment and stuff like that. Then uh, I'll have more time, and then hopefully this disability thing gets figured out. Which that's sort of an up and down uh, thing right now. It's just not a lot of fun, but. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, I'd much prefer if I could do something else. I'd much prefer that, but it just sort of where, is it, where I'm at. I can only handle so much, and I'm doing well. Uh, the secret Dam thing makes me sound like I'm dying at times, but most of that's cut out, um, the harder part of the hill. But it's I'm doing I'm doing well. I actually am doing really well. Like I handle Gettysburg. is a lot of hiking uh, up on Devil's Den, going up on top of the rocks. I was able to handle it. It's tough. A little uncertain but I was actually really happy with what I was able to do because that's 
the most hiking I've been able to do in a while. I was tired, a little sore, but I'm not actually that sore today. So it uh, it worked out good, and I am watching myself and being really, really careful. Uh, Cliff was really watching as well, just making sure I'm not pushing myself too hard. So it was a fun day. We we're talking about doing uh, potentially going back and doing. There's so many monuments there, and a lot of them are monuments where they're, they're specifying where a certain unit was during the battle, and you know, a lot of those monuments, nobody sees. They see the big ones like the Pennsylvania Monument or the General Warren statue, uh, the General Meade there at the, you know, the angle there where the Pickett's Charge hit and it, the lines actually broke. Those are the type of statues that people see a lot of times. The little markers that specify the men that actually fought there. I think it'd be cool. Like Cliff was the one to came up with the idea and talked about, hey, we should go and, and just – there's got to be something there on the internet through Gettysburg National uh, Battlefield that has where each of those markers are. Because then, you know, because of the Civil War as well, there's so much documented. You'd be able to say, okay, this is the 1st Connecticut Artillery Division. This is the town in Connecticut where they were from. This is when they enlisted. These are the men. And it, just to give a little more information, so it, it sort of it personalizes history a little bit more. And I think that would be something that would be cool to document. Uh, Cliff and I have talked about it. I think it'd be a really cool sort of collab series that we could do and, and people could enjoy. So that's something that we've talked about doing. And Gettysburg really isn't that far away for us. And I think it'd be something that'd be fun to do. Maybe hit six to ten of those monuments in a day and then uh, do the audio over pictures or whatever and, and talk a little bit more in depth about each of those units, uh, where they were from, who they were, and you know, what battles they fought and that type of stuff, the history of the unit. So I think that'd be pretty cool, and that's something we're looking forward to doing. I am uh, hoping in the next couple of weeks to be able to do the first woman, women, uh, hometown heroines, the heroines of hometown history uh, with uh, Lindley Murray's mom and, and her whole story. So I'm hoping I'll get, get to that soon. A uh, lot of plans, a lot of cool stuff. Like I said, I'm hoping eventually in the next month, maybe by December, Maybe wait till January, uh, try to get the first About Town series. I also was pretty excited watching uh, one of JP videos, uh, Jay's videos. He did Jim Thorpe. I really like his videoing style, and it gave me a lot of ideas for uh, mainline attractions or main street attractions, and then also walking to Maine. Just how you video like I do a lot of different angles with my photography well I gotta do that with my filming too and uh, I want to try to do that just to show the architecture in a little more of a unique view also use music a little bit more where I'm not talking it just sort of gives you a cooler sort of experience uh, where you're able to watch a video where it just doesn't feel it feels like you're just you know going through it and it's just a really good experience shows the town in a really good light and it's not just me walking with the straight camera filming just testing things and seeing what works and like i said i need to get together with my friend kurt and uh he he has a lot of experience in filming and then get some of his ideas and and try to come up with a style that really works and is fun and do that i also want to at some point i want to get up to do that route 325 that cliff talked about that's a really beautiful drive um Probably won't be able to do that until say like the weekend at the earliest is like I said Thursday and Friday I'm gonna be working all day for the most part because we are getting we're almost at the very end of mowing season we had like four or five frosts in a row but it's slowed the grass down certainly but it hasn't like stopped it so there are people that still want their lawns mowed and this week so far has been pretty warm so I got that to look forward to but uh yeah it's channel's really growing uh some of the things in the future as well i think when we get around 800 subscribers because we're only about 300 hours away from the watch hours being reached for being a youtube partner uh 534 subscribers i think was the last i looked uh so there's quite a ways for that and that is something that's going to take time we got the milton hershey video that'll be coming up at some point in the next week or so probably towards the end of next week when that will be dropped i'll film it probably this weekend uh, that should gain a little bit of attention because it's, you know, and the Gettysburg stuff is something that's going to be searched a little more because you do go up and down. Like, I'll have videos that reach 200, 300 views in no time, and then I struggle to reach 100 views. And it's, it just is one of those things is how the algorithm works and that type of stuff. It's not discouraging or anything. It's just, you know, Cliff and I talked about this a lot, and uh, it's just one of those things you prepare, for, prepare yourself for. 
and you watch and you just try to figure out what you got to do to try to get those views up and that type of stuff to just get more attention. I still want to do that under a minute hometown history. I just had a lot of struggles with trying to get, although my phone got possessed or what happened, but every single time I tried to do the video, my film was sh shutting down uh, and then it wasn't saving it. Sometimes it was just like doing all kinds of weird stuff that it hasn't done ever before, but around this Palm Monument, maybe a haunted history video for that, how it kills phones, but uh, was having issues with that, but I do want to try to get that done at some time. I'm not sure if a YouTube short's going to really help the channel or not, but I'm going to try to do a couple of those. Uh, something It's hard to fit something in a minute or under a minute, but uh, maybe do a little bit of introduction to the channel as one of the YouTube shorts as well and just say, hey, check us out, see what we all got to offer. Pretty cool channel, a lot of fun. A little biased, but it's awesome. But uh, also, what else I got to say? Oh, once I hit around 800 subscribers, I think I am going to do the Patreon thing just simply because it is a way to sponsor the channel to help with gas and that type of stuff. Because as I'm getting healthier here, and especially as I'm not working and not having to worry about that, I am able to get out on longer trips. It does cost a little bit more until I start actually making money with the channel. Because once you have your ads in, which I know like Stuart had said, uh, ads are showing up and I noticed that as well it was maybe showing up a one every 15 you'd see an ad on a video that just happened to be there so apparently YouTube is making money off of my videos and I'm not but that's okay I have a lot a lot of fun doing this but I want to do look forward with the channel that I don't know when that 800 will ha happen but once that starts to happen then I can start going out a little further doing some places that are a little further away I'm doing longer videos that'll be coming up more and stuff like that. So I do want to do some more nature type of stuff where I go out to parks and that type of stuff. So uh, that'll be happening. And uh, also then a merch store probably in January with some of the sayings that I use. Uh, my niece is going to, my youngest niece Ella is going to design the kids wear type stuff because she does some pretty cutesy type characters and I think that like big eyes are... it is funny how the one guy I forget which viewer said it but he's like it seems like every single time you do a video either a helicopter a plane a tank an aircraft carrier the Death Star something shows up and it starts going kablam kablam pew 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 and it was a tractor that just went by which we get quite a few of those, but that was an especially loud one. But anyways, um, my niece is going to design like the cutesy sort of kids wear, all those types of things. And then my older niece, Bethany, she's actually going to design the logo for the channel. Uh, we were talking when we got together for Cliff and I's party on Sunday. We were talking a little bit more of my artistic, artistic ideas, but I'm going to trust to her artistic influence in that regard because she really knows what she's doing. She's going to design more like the adult wear, uh, that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping maybe January, Jan January, February, we'll maybe have a merch store. Um, and we'll have fun with this. And then we'll come up with more and more ideas to build the channel and, and continue to grow. And uh, once again, I want to say you guys are the best. And this, this experience has been great. Being able to go out and do this has been awesome. I do want to thank also... People like Cliff, of course, uh, the Wandering Woodsman, he's my best friend, uh, really, in essence, getting me into this. And I also want to, like, I do want to do a video here coming up in a, hopefully in the next couple days. Sort of like a vlog, but it's more like the channels that inspire me, that I admire, that, you know, friends and stuff like that, and put that out there. Because I do think part of the YouTube community, I think sometimes we get caught up in the idea, like, oh, we're competing. And it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, like, like Cliff and I, I mean, obviously Cliff has over 50,000 subscribers. I'm only 500. But in a lot of ways, we share a lot of the same viewers and subscribers. Nobody's going to be like, well, somebody might be. But for the most part, people are going to probably say, hey, I like both of those guys. I like both of them, what they do, and enjoy when they do videos together and that type of stuff. So there's really no reason for us to be competing. It's better for us, I think, to support one another because we grow the entire community. And, uh, you know, somebody like Jay, I mentioned him earlier, I really like his, his videographer style, uh, really quite cool, and 
it's going to be quite an influence on my channel because that's where Cliff is and where JR, that's where I want this channel to be at some point. I want to have my own unique feel to it. I want to make my own way and stuff like that. But at the same time, the things that they do really are quite impressive with their channels. So, and that's why they've grown like they have. That's why they do well. They work very, very hard at what they do. And uh, if you can find individuals like that that you hope you can call your peers, but you know you can be more like that and do more of a job like that, it's it's, it's a plus. So, with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop yip yapping. Uh, hopefully get up to some more adventures and whatnot. I'm not going to do any more filming today. I just want to go download these videos and uh, get ready for tomorrow to go do some mowing. And uh, we will see you uh, on our next adventure, and we will see you all about town. Thanks, everybody.